If you know you need to get your folders organized on your computer and your files in those folders, but you're not sure where to start, this video series is for you. I'll be showing you how to organize your folders on the computer in this eight part video series. We'll talk about part two, how to plan your folder structure today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello, and welcome to today's Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity, and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today is part two of our eight part video series on how to organize your folders on the computer. Today, I'll talk to you about how to plan your folder structure. I know it can seem kind of boring and time consuming to plan in advance with your folder structure. You'd rather just jump in and do it but there may be a lot of things you want to think about as you're planning your folder structure. And we'll talk about a lot of that today. It can help to create this plan and see in advance what you're going to do so you can see if there's things you want to move around or maybe some things that don't make as much sense. You can do this planning however it makes sense for you. If you want to start building your folder structure and move things around that way, you can. It might be easier just to write it on a piece of paper or type it up in a Word document, whichever way works best for you. Today, I'll be showing you how to plan by using the actual folder structure, but that's just because it gives you a good visual and a way to think about your own structure as you're writing it down or maybe creating it yourself. In the next video, which is part three, we'll be going through how to actually build the folder structure in your computer. In the first video of the series, we talked about deciding where your folder structure will live. My recommendation was to work with what your computer will try to do anyway. So in this case, my computer will try to save my documents in my documents folder. So why not create my folder structure in there? And you can see I've actually already built a different folder structure, but we'll build a brand new one so that you can see what I mean. I'll be creating some of the structure in front of you just for a visual, but we're really talking about how we think about the plan for our folder structure. So the first piece is what's the main folder called? Some people will build it all in documents and start there. So their main folder is the documents that's built in. I personally want to create a business folder structure. So I'm going to create a business folder in my documents area. So you can see here, I created this business folder. Again, we're just really talking about the plan right now, not necessarily how to create everything. I'll show you that next time, but we're gonna go in here and now we're gonna to start to think about what is my overall folder structure for these business files. So I'm going to go in there and I have a blank slate to think through this. The main thing that a lot of my clients get hung up on is what folders do I create? What do I call them? All those types of things. What are the primary categories of things that you either receive as documents, you create as documents? This could also be photos. It could be any kind of files that you create, receive, or have to collaborate on. So start with those big buckets. A lot of people go straight for the details. So I have a document that's about this client and it's this specific document. We're gonna back up and we're gonna say, okay, so you deal with clients. That's our overarching piece there. So you have clients as a generic folder. So I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create my folder, but again, you're just creating your plan. We're thinking through the plan here, but just so we have a visual, I'll create a folder here. So that is my primary folder is a client's folder. And then maybe you immediately think about, well, I have a blog and I have a website and I have stuff for all of those. And I have all these other pieces. And maybe for a family, this could be, oh, well, this kid has this type of appointment and this kid has this kind of homework. And I would keep all this stuff on the computer. We want to back up and think about the larger category for the company. It was marketing. Marketing is the overall for the blog, the newsletter, the website, all those types of things. That's marketing. For the family, it could be just a kid's folder or a homework folder, or you could have one for each kid. It's up to you how broad you want to start. But I highly recommend having a very broad category. So in the instance of the marketing, let's say there's something that you have that overarches all of the blogs and the newsletters and the website. Maybe it's some content that would go to all of them. 
Well, then <clears throat> you don't want to create multiples of the documents in those multiple places. So why not have a bigger primary folder called marketing? And that's where that could live, where it applies to everything in the marketing folder. And so the next piece would be creating subfolders. So we're just thinking big right now. So since this is my business one, I'm going to go ahead and do marketing. And we'll do one more example right now. This can really apply for both personal and for business. You most likely will want a financial or records or whatever the word, whatever word makes the most sense. And that's something that I try to work with my clients on. I always ask them, what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you think about this document or picture or whatever it is? Whatever pops to mind first is what you want to name the folder or a file or a picture name, no matter what it is, it's what pops to mind. What are you going to look for that under? And so although financial may make sense to me, something else may make more sense to you. And that's perfectly fine. I'm not saying you need to lay it out exactly as I am. I'm giving you an idea of how to lay yours out. What's nice about this layout is remember, we have the larger business folder that is over all of these. Let's say there's something very generic that has to do with the business overall. You can put that in this folder. You could have some loose files in this folder and that's not a problem. That's the nice thing about building your folder structure this way. And if you have something general that's for all clients, that could go in this folder before we create subfolders for each client. And one trick that I like to use is having a folder that is for those old versions of documents that I don't need anymore, but I might need to reference. So let's say I have multiple versions of a contract that I'm creating and I might need the older version, but I don't need it in my sight line. And it might bother me if it's in the list of things that are there. So for those instances, I like to create what I call a Z archive folder. And just because it has the word archive in it doesn't mean it does anything special. It's just what I like to call it. Some people like to call it Z old items. And I put the Z in front to make it jump to the bottom of the list. So let me show you what I would do. I usually do a small Z in the word archive. Again, this is a preference thing. Some of my clients say old items, some of my clients say don't need or something like that. This can also be helpful if you get the feeling like you have things that you don't want to let go of yet, then you can go ahead and put them in here. And what's nice is you can use this type of folder in all of your folders. Any folder where you might have something that you don't want to let go of yet, it might be an older version of something, you can create something like this. Um, one of my clients calls it replaced. Whatever makes the most sense to you is what you want to put. That is one trick that you can use in any of your folders. So let's talk about subfolders now. So the, for the clients, you would probably have a folder for each client. And if you would also have subfolders in each of those, let's say you have invoices and estimates and things like that for each of those clients, I will show you in a couple videos how to create folder templates. And that's what I would recommend in those instances where you'll have a lot of the same generic documents. Let's say you have a template document that you create for each client. You can have the blank one in this template folder. And that template folder can have all of the subfolders that you would always create each time, have it all ready, and then you can copy it, paste it, and all that stuff is ready to go. You just need to put the client name on it. So I'll show you that in a couple of videos. But today we're going to just talk about your subfolders would be each client. That's pretty straightforward here. Um, your financial, you might have one for taxes. You might have one for your accountant and so on. So now we're still thinking we have the largest bucket, which are the big primary topic behind what we're thinking about. And then here, they still may be larger buckets. They're not really specific things, but we're getting more and more specific as we go. Now, I wouldn't do a ton of levels of subfolders, but you get the idea of where we're going here. And in taxes, I typically have each year. And then in each year, I have whatever needs to be in there. And that's about as far as I go with those subfolders. I wouldn't go too many layers past that. I usually say about four layers. So your first layer would be your financial, second layer would be taxes, and then the third layer would be the years. 
And so I don't usually go too much beyond that because then you start to have to click many times to get to things. This is how you want to start with building your folder structure. And again, we're not talking about the mechanics of the building right now. We're really talking about the plan, having a plan in place. Again, as I said, if it's easier for you to just write this down, that's perfectly fine. I wanted you to have more of a visual. Think about the largest buckets, and then you can dig deeper with the subfolders after that. If this overwhelms you, you may just start with these primary folders and the next pieces that we do, you can put everything in these primary folders and then worry about subfolders later. Maybe you don't know what those are gonna be right now and that's fine, but get your primary folders figured out before you get started with all the movement. And remember that this is always a work in progress. So you may create some folders, realize that you either name them a way you don't like, or you put something in that you don't want or missed something that you need to add. You can add and subtract things all the time. You can change names. There's no worries about this. The idea is to get that plan in place. That's something to start with so that you're not going all over the place when you first start moving all of your files. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please let me know in the comments below and you can put questions down in the comments as well and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also give the video a thumbs up or you could share it with someone you think could benefit from the information. And be sure to subscribe by clicking the red button below. This is especially important if you'd like to follow this series of videos. You'll want to subscribe so that you can get notifications each time a video is posted. And you can do that by clicking the bell icon that you'll see once you click subscribe. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.